all, in this series we're going to investigate the journeys and the characteristics of your average canine friend. Distinctly in the uh, specimen hair of Jack. Jack is a beagle. But not just any kind of beagle. He's a beagle Labrador. And we're going to look throughout this series at the different characteristics of life. For example, feeding, excrementing, playing, <laughs> searching. Here we see footprints. The age old sign that there has in fact been life in this region. Now footprints tell us a lot about the animal. As you can see here, we've got the big area of the pad. We've got the four toes. And this shows that with the size of the footprint, it is in fact a puppy. What's significant about this footprint is that it will tell other animals that indeed a juvenile beast is in the region, showing that the animal is in fact vulnerable to attack. So as we look around the footprints, we can see there's confusion. The puppy has a lack of sense of direction. He's just been going everywhere, anywhere he likes. Very confusing. This shows that he is not yet able to determine exactly where he needs to be. This will in fact develop over time as he grows into an adult dog. Half lab, half beagle. You can see the beagle colorings here at the Labrador physique. This dog, this dog that is on a journey. A journey of exploration, a sensory journey, especially that of the nasal cavity. He's on the search, search for smells, new smells, different smells, smells, smells. He's on the search for smells as we walk into mud. There you can see him sniffing. There he is gathering information about his environment. He's scanning the area, checking for any possible threats. He can see, no, there are no threats, therefore he shall be free. He shall run with exhilaration. He and sniffs Francis. again. He sniffs again, this time a new terrain. What is this terrain? He must sniff in order to gather the data necessary to assess the safety of the situation. He looks round. No, he's confident it's okay. Scanning the debris of a recent storm on a coastal beach. That's where beaches are usually, aren't they? Coastal. Well, they can be around lakes, I suppose. Anyway, this one's coastal. He sees the nutrients that will help him survive in this hostile world. How you see the dog collar helps him in many ways to identify who he is with himself. There you can see the seaweed brings a lot of satisfaction. It has a wonderful flavor. The Japanese like it a lot and so do dogs. Sniffs around again, scanning, scanning for anything more that he can get. He must have his five plus a day. It's difficult being a dog because even though he's fed science diet three times a day, he is always on the search, always on the search for the ultimate doggy feast. It usually involves those seaweedy things with the very stinky pods on the ends. There you can see he's found one, always enjoying the ecstasy. You can see the arched back. That is a sign of absolute joy and exhilaration. It's like kind of a candy of the sea. This little sea party seaweed urchin thing is full of flavor. It's a putrescent flavor. Putrescent is a word and it means absolutely disgusting. To a human but to a puppy this is heaven. It's candy. It's sweetness, it's goodness, it's desire. It's all the things your owner doesn't want you to eat, but you must! So in part three, we're going to look at the uh, mechanism of fetch. What it all means, as you can see, he's ready. He's in the position, signaling to, in fact, his owner that he is ready. The anticipation is just almost too much. He 
stick is it welling up within him. He needs the stick. He must have the stick. What is it about a dog and a stick? This is one of the great mysteries of life. So we'll watch. Shall we go? Now we need some cue words like ready? Ready? He's ready. He's stickling that he's ready. All right, here we go. And I will proceed to throw the stick. And he will get the stick. Here we go. Right, here we go. And fetch boy, fetch. You see, he grabs the stick with careful tenderness. This is a very significant feature of that particular animal. Bring the stick here, boy. Bring it, it gets a bit distracted. Bring the stick. Come on. There we go. A good example of a dog that brings it back to its owner. See, he brought it back to me. Nice one. Good boy, stop it now. A dog that digs. There's no known reason why a dog must dig, but it must, and it must obey the call. I'm the king of the castle, and you're the dirty rascal. we can see the weird regal and upright pose of a dog in salute. Also a dog that is very cold. You can see him shaking, shivering, shivering and shaking. This is a dog that is malnourished, neglected, without any, without any love. He must find his own love in the birds. He wanders aimlessly to and fro, hoping to find some sort of attention, but to no avail. And as the rain falls on the water, the dog realizes his plight is in fact doomed. It's nothing like a relationship with the man and his dog running into a storm. The joy, the absurdity, the love. 